Hiya! My name's Becky George. Welcome to our Makaton UK Blessing. Hiya, my name's Becky George. Welcome to our Makaton UK Blessing.
If your brother sins against you, go and tell him what he did wrong. Do this in private. If he listens to you, then you have helped him to be your brother again. But if he refuses to listen, then go to him again and take one or two other people with you. Every case may be proved by two or three witnesses. If he refuses to listen to them, then tell it to the church. If he refuses to listen to the church, then treat him as you would one who does not believe in God. Treat him as if he were a tax collector. I tell you the truth. The things you don't allow on earth will be the things God does not allow. The things you allow on earth will be the things that God allows. Also, I tell you that if two of you on earth agree about something, then you can pray for it, and the thing you ask will be done by you, my Father in heaven. This is true because if two or three people come together in my name, I am there for them.
uh, I'd like to introduce you to some friends who I brought along to help me with the sermon this morning. Here we go. I'd like you to meet Bob. This is Bob. And this is Bob's friend. This is Bert. Now Bob and Bert are friends, but Bob thinks that Bert has done something wrong. But Bert, he disagrees and they spend a long time arguing. And they are both getting extremely cross with each other. And they used to be friends, but now they're starting to feel like they hate each other. And then Bob recognises that they've become, they've become stuck in their arguing and he has an idea. He goes and he gets Betty. Here's Betty. Hello, Betty. There's Betty. Now, Betty, Betty is a peacemaker. Betty's a peacemaker and she wants to help. She wants to help Bert and she wants to help Bob and she wants to help them to become friends again. So Betty, she encourages Bob to listen to Bert and she encourages Bert to listen to Bob and she encourages them to really listen to each other without any shouting. And as they listen and as they talk, they start to see a way forward and a possibility for them becoming friends again. Becoming friends. So well done, Betty. Well done, Betty. The world needs more people like Betty. Let's all give Betty a big clap. So thank you to Bert and Bob and Betty for helping us with that story. In our gospel reading today, Jesus is teaching his disciples about the importance of resolving disputes in the Christian community. If we can't sort it out privately between the two of us, we're to go and get the help of someone else or even two people. And if that still doesn't work, we can seek the help of a whole community. Jesus knows that arguments and the bad feelings that they engender, they shouldn't fester. It seems to me that there is a lot in life that Bob and Bert might argue about at the moment. The pandemic has surely made our world uh, an even more volatile place. You might remember that there were some very big arguments lately about school exams and how the grades were to be worked out. Perhaps some of you might have been affected by these or, or know others who have. And then there have been quite big arguments locally too about the temporary cycle lanes that are going in with cyclists and car drivers at loggerheads like Bob and Bert were. 
looking more widely, there's a, a, a dangerous growing conflict, I think, now in America as they prepare for their elections there. And Brexit, who remembers Brexit? All those trade deals still to be worked out, so much to resolve. And then, of course, there is the climate emergency, perhaps our biggest challenge yet. How can we cut all our emissions in time? And then, of course, there are all the things that we're trying to work out too around COVID-19 and how we can manage this pandemic. All of these things, they have to be talked about and worked out and worked through. But there's always the potential that they can turn into a conflict that is destructive and is dangerous for us all. In the Bible, Jesus says, peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. Peace, peace is something that Jesus mentions a lot of times in scripture. I think that Christians are called to be like Betty. We are called to help to be the peacemakers in the world and we're called to help resolve conflicts. Our former, uh, our former Archbishop Rowan Williams says this, we make peace, we proclaim and work for reconciliation, not because we think it's quite a good idea, but because our Heavenly Father has implanted it in the DNA of our new creation, our rebirth as his children. We cannot help ourselves. We cannot give each other up. Christians have been at the centre of peace and reconciliation work throughout history. And this is always, I think, very difficult work. And we've not always handled conflicts well, uh, particularly our own conflicts at times within the church. But our faith calls us to find ways of reducing destructive conflict wherever we come across it. Peace first demands justice and that everyone is treated fairly. For us to live peaceably together means transforming unjust structures of oppression like poverty or racism and we're always called to do that, to do that work. And until we're free of this, we won't really, I think, ever know true peace. So how do we learn to become peacemakers like Betty? We can begin with ourselves. We can ask ourselves, why do I make mean remarks about a person or why have I responded to that Facebook post in a really cutting unpleasant way and we can ask ourselves what causes my resentments towards that person or why am I continuing to nurse hurts by that person instead of forgiving them and we can also ask ourselves, have I truly listened to that person? Have I taken the time to really hear what they have to say? And have I been open to possibly changing some of the things that I have been thinking? If we want peace, we can begin by trying to be people of peace. And it's amazing how taking some time for self-reflection and listening to each other, plus a little kindness, can go a really long way. No matter how difficult the situation, 
we can always trust that there is hope and a way forward. Because as Jesus teaches us in our gospel today, if two or three people come together in a spirit of Christ-like love, God will be with us. Ask Betty, ask Betty, she knows all about it. Peace be with you. us declare our faith in God. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The bidding for the prayers is, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear God, we give thanks for your earth, animals and people. We ask that you help us to continue reaching out to help others. We pray for the Good Shepherd and for those that join the congregation, either through public or private worship. And in our prayer cycle, bless Mile Oak. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, bless Reverend Jane as the new associate vicar of our church and grant her good luck in the coming years. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Loving God, help us to be grateful and generous and to share with others who may not have as much as we do. We give thanks for local services such as food banks who look after members of our community. Help us to spread joy and peace in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Healing God, we thank the doctors, nurses and carers who devote their lives to healing others. Help strengthen and heal those who are suffering at this time. We take a moment of quiet to pray for someone who is in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Our Father, we pray for those who have recently died, and in our year's mind we remember Margaret Haffenden. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen.